The camera, capturing everything from news to weddings, immortalizing the moment. But they are also recording something else, a missile-like object or creature able to appear out of nowhere for just a fraction of a second before disappearing again. To researchers, they are simply called rods. Who knows what it is, but there was something there. These things travel at maybe 135, maybe 200 miles an hour. You can miss it with the naked eye. Rods are described as one to six feet long with a cylindrical body and either multiple sets of wings or with a thin membrane of wings wrapped around their entire length, propelling the creature forward so fast they are undetectable to the naked eye. Rods have been little more than a curiosity. That is, until October 20th, 2002. Is it a bird, a plane, or something else? People are asking now that a mysterious object has been caught on tape over Albany, New York. Brandon Mowry is a photojournalist from Albany, New York. He was shooting video for a local newscast when he found something he could not explain. I went out to the airport to shoot some weather video that day. Uh, it's a five second bump shot for the weather, a tease for the weather. Um, I was shooting planes taking off at the Albany International Airport at the end of a runway. Maori did not notice anything out of the ordinary at the airport at the time. His discovery came upon returning to the station. While I was editing the tape, I happened to just pause it on, you know, on, on a frame. And um, I looked up and there was this object in the, in the shot. What is this, a UFO? Is this, it looks strange, like a missile? You know, like all these things are going through my head. He found a long cylindrical winged object streaking past a passenger plane taking off from the airport. To Maori, it appeared to be large and very fast, appearing in only a few frames of video. It looks suspiciously like a missile over a commercial airport. Maori called in station reporter Dan Bazile to view the image. Still in the shadow of 9-11, Bazile felt he needed to notify airport security. Airport security, airport officials looked at it and they said, we have no idea what this is. I don't think we caught this on radar. They called the FBI. FBI came in, an agent came in, he confiscated, or I should say he just took the tape from Brandon and he took off. There may be good reason for the FBI's interest. It appears again in 2003 over Baghdad, moments after a giant explosion rocked the city. And in this video, a rod appears to fly past a Swedish tank at a test firing range. There are a surprising number of rods found in and around military operations or where aircraft are seen, leading some to theorize Rods may be connected to secret military weapons. I believe it was something classified that the government doesn't want us to know about. It's flying up in the sky, they didn't want us to know about it, and they took that tape, they don't want us to know. So I'm thinking this was some sort of test. To this day, Brandon has stuck to his story, and the FBI considers the case open and would not comment on its findings. There's no doubt that this event was taken very seriously, okay, by the FBI and the military. It was definitely a matter of national security as far as they were concerned. Jose Escamilla is a Rod's researcher and historian who has collected over 2,000 Rod images from all over the world. And according to Jose, Rod's have been around for a long time. I'm going to show you a photo that was taken in 1910 in France. Here it is, check it out. This is the object here. 1910, during a race, this object was here, and it's definitely cylindrical in shape. It seems to have undulations on it. Skeptics frequently tell Escamilla rods are just birds or bugs distorted by the camera, but he argues many rods are recorded in places where animals should not be flying about, like this video. Something's captured on the video. It appears to be cylindrical. It appears to be moving at high speed. Filmed in May 1999 and brought to the attention of meteorologist Gary England, this rod appears to fly through a tornado. 
It was recorded on a broadcast quality camera from a news helicopter, tracking a tornado as it swept through Oklahoma City. A large uh, tornado was coming up in the southwest toward Oklahoma City. It turned out to be uh, an F5 tornado. It turned out to be a tornado with the strongest winds ever recorded in history. The rod appears to emerge from a cloud that England estimates is 10 miles away from the news chopper. But does it really? When played in slow motion, it is difficult to tell whether the rod is going behind the cloud or is appearing and disappearing. You see what appears to be a, um, looks like a cylindrical tube, but it's a flash. It's a, uh, it's a flash that appears in the frame. Bang, moved very quickly. It, it looks like it just appears out of a cloud. I looked at it and you kind of go, wow, you know, what is this? And I have to tell you right now, I still don't know what it is. Jose Escamilla has also seen the Oklahoma City videotape. Here's another one farther down, and this appears to be going into the funnel cloud itself. So this thing is going into a pretty fast clip, and it's huge. That's an amazing shot. What was it doing in a thunderstorm that turned out to be that it produced the worst tornado in history? You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. The photographers that capture rods on tape claim they were not visible to the naked eye and were only discovered later by chance, deepening the mystery. Who knows what it is, but there was something there. The rod's ability to appear and disappear in the blink of an eye leads some to an interesting theory. They are something from another dimension. I have seen footage, all right, of these things that appear to be phasing in and out. What I mean by phasing is they are there and part of the torso disappears and then the other torso, the other part comes back in. Whether it's from another dimension, I can't even answer that one. I'm just telling you what I've seen. This theory is not without precedent. Author and scientist Carl Sagan once said, if a fourth dimensional creature existed, it could, in our three-dimensional universe, appear and dematerialize at will. Is it theoretically possible for beings to cross between dimensions? Well, theoretically, yes. Professor Thomas Banchoff is a mathematician at Brown University. Time is used very frequently by physicists to represent a fourth dimension, especially since the work of Einstein in relativity theory, where we want to study phenomena, and the phenomena are events. You have three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. The classic analogy to understand dimensions higher than our own goes back to Edwin Abbott Abbott in 1884. He wrote the book Flatland. Flatland is a two-dimensional world, like the surface of a still pond. And one of the key things in that two-dimensional world, in the story, is a visitation from a creature from a higher dimension. A higher dimension is spaceland, and you have a beach ball that's ready to come through Flatland. When it does, A square, the narrator of Flatland, just sees the intersection of the sphere with the plane. He sees a circle. He recognizes circles. He's familiar with those in his world. But a circle that appears mysteriously and then disappears is something that is very hard for him to explain. Time travel and multiple dimensions have long been the basis for great stories. In 1895, H.G. Wells wrote the science fiction thriller, The Time Machine, later made into two movies. But most rods seem to be flying, not just popping in like Wells' time machine. One way to verify whether rods are either military experiments or an undiscovered flying creature is to see whether an object similar in shape can actually fly. Monster Quest puts it to the test. I believe the object can fly. Dr. Wee Hu is an aerospace engineer at Iowa State University. Any ship can fly as long as you uh, give a lot of power. Monster Quest and Dr. Hu have enlisted several engineering students to help with an experiment. If these things are real, it could open up a whole new door to aerodynamics. They will build two different models, one with soft, flexible wings to simulate the descriptions of rods propelled by thin membranes, the other more rigid, resembling the descriptions of missile-shaped rods.
The flight worthiness and aerodynamic characteristics of each model will be determined using the wind tunnel at Iowa State University. The models we made were, again, basically a flat plate, but the ends of it were somewhat flexible so it could move a little bit in the airstream. And then we covered it with a latex sheet to simulate like a skin or just some kind of covering. The wind tunnel allows the students to measure drag and lift in a controlled environment. Electronic sensors provide exact numbers. But is their experiment relevant to this photo? Allegedly picturing a craft that is at home in the water as well as the atmosphere, leading some to think that rods are alien UFOs. It was taken off from Norway and in July 1957. It's a rod, you know, coming out of the ocean. Some researchers believe that rods could be a UFO. Now a photograph has surfaced, which bears closer scrutiny. We found a photograph taken by a naval person. It was taken off of Norway in the July 1957. It's a rod, you know, coming out of the ocean, taken with 35 millimeter film. It has the rod shape, but seems to be moving sideways, away from the water, unlike any other rod images. While rods are, by definition, unidentified flying objects, are they from another world? I don't think so. I mean, we have objects, rod-like objects flying in, but that doesn't necessarily mean that an alien, you know, made them. This optical physicist says the classic winged rod images and circumstances surrounding them are different than the typical alien UFO sightings. UFO subject, of course, has a long history, approaching 60 years now, and it's not just visual, it's not just film or videos of things moving uh, at high speed. Uh, the UFO phenomenon has numerous witness cases where they see some object that's standing still or they see very clearly an object that's moving slowly enough so there's no doubt that they can tell the shape. Regardless of whether rods are from Earth or someplace else, the question for the Iowa engineers is, can the unusual rod wing design provide sufficient lift for flight? In order for the flying rod to fly, uh, you must have lift and you must have enough force to overcome drag. And so the wind tunnel can tell us basically the, the characteristic, it's the lift and drag characteristics. While they know the shape, they do not know whether rods are rigid or soft-bodied, so they are building one of each and will test the flight characteristics of both structures. The first model to enter the wind tunnel is the flexible body. As the wind speed increases, the team makes adjustments in the presentation angle of the rod. The flexible rod model soon begins to shake, becoming unstable in the wind, unable to provide consistent lift. The rigid rod model is next to be tested. And as the wind speed increases, the model remains stable. As they adjust the flight angle, positive drag and lift numbers begin to appear.